Hello and welcome back to my Drone How video series. My name is Raida Boost and in this video we take a look into quite basic things. We are checking different workflows how we can better organize our photos, images that we have taken with a drone. Basically, once we start our drone survey and do it uh, in a regular basis, then we may end up quite easily with hundreds or thousands of images. And uh, to find ways how we can make those photos um, searchable more easily, it is really important because otherwise this data is just data and it doesn't carry maybe any value because we can't find anything. Um, I just uh, draw one example. Uh, I have been using a drone at one particular construction site for about one year, weekly basis, and I do have about 35,000 images. To find one particular image, maybe that image when it was snowing, it's not so easy. So to find different ways how to add those tags and keywords or artificial intelligence is really important. And this technology is already available because we maybe have used it already in our own photo series. Meaning that um, once we organize our private or family photos, we have used some uh, free or commercial software package already in here. We can use that same software also to carry out those workflows with our drone images. Sometimes uh, we also may need to downscale our images. Well, anybody can do it uh, picture by picture or image by image, but to find a way how we can automate this process because um, it is not reasonable to make such a process uh, one by one if we have, let's say, tens of thousands of images, then uh, to find an automatic way is really important. So let's turn our attention to computer screen and let's check those workflows that we can apply today to better organize our photo series. So let's take a look to the folder structure. As I said, I have been carrying out this drone mission uh, just about one year and uh, this data has been divided into weekly basis uh, folder structure. And uh, if I check one specific folder, then I can also see the substructure that I have divided this information into different um, mission heights. If I carry out the same mission all over the time, then um, I can easily check one specific image which has been made from one specific location. And basically in my file name, I can see the same number and uh, I can use this number in search box and find all those images. I can easily do a search in where I do have a mission code. Let's say this uh, 001 is a mission code and uh, also I can include a picture number. Once I do a search, I can easily get all of my images that include this same string. And because I have organized my data in such a way that I do or use the same flight mission, then I can easily get uh, the same image basically uh, from different weeks. And as such, I can do those conclusions about uh, how my construction process has been proceeded. If I take a details view, then I can see that I do have 47 images altogether. By using Windows functionality, I can include different tags to those images. For example, if I take another look and see my images as large thumbnails, I can, let's say, click on some of those, which presents my roof. Let's do one, two, three, four, and then maybe five. I then select view and title Spain. So five images has been selected and I can add a tag. Let's put, for example, roof and then I just need to hit enter. I will finish my this search and next time I can basically search through my tags which has been added. So I include tags and roof and then I can hit enter and I can get those images which include one specific tag or tags. This helps a lot to find some certain images. So I can start from the more general search and then I can include some specific tags. Of course this search may take some time 
but uh, it also depends how many files I do have. And if I do want to remove this tag, then uh, I can simply do the opposite. I can select those images again, and I can simply delete those tags that I don't need. And of course, I do need to hit enter or save, and then this information is also deleted or added from my image meta info. Okay, I can end this search and maybe just to sum it up, in my folder structure I do have about uh, 250 gigabytes of um, images, let's say about 35,000. To be able to carry out this search manually, so it really takes time. So I do need to find out uh, some other ways to do it and uh, by using uh, some specific mission data, mission coding or image name field, I can easily search from more general point of view and then adding details in terms of tags. Of course, if I do want to share one specific folder um, with different parties, then uh, there are different ways to do it, using Dropbox, OneDrive, or I can also use uh, some my operating system default possibilities. So for example, if I do a similar search as before by using a file name, then I can select some images, do a right click and by hitting open, then I do have a possibility to add those images into my albums by clicking add to. But in a way, this is not a convenient way to do. Yes, you have possibilities to create slideshow and also some videos, but still you have to do it one by one. And if you do it the uh, other way around, that you first create a album, yes, then you can add uh, multiple images, but still it's not so convenient way to do it. Now, a lot easier is to use uh, some specific software which has been created to build those albums for you. And also you can then share those albums more easily. And I also take a look uh, into some of those. One of them is open source and another one is commercial product. But before I take a look to those software packages, let's talk about um, some general image sharing possibilities. First of all, we can see that uh, those default images that has been taken by our drone are about uh, eight, nine megabytes each. And of course, depending on different use cases, you do need such a high resolution in some cases. For example, if you want to create a photogrammetry based 3D model. But uh, if this image is shared for some general knowledge that uh, you can point out that, okay, we have problems here, or we want to let somebody to add comments, then you quite possibly don't need such a high resolution image. So currently my images are about uh, 5000 by 4000 uh, pixels. It's a possibility actually that uh, I can take a measurement from this image itself if it is uh, in high resolution, meaning that uh, if I carry out a drone program from some specific height, let's say so 50 meters, then I can actually see how much does my one pixel represent. In current case, which has been taken from 50 meters, my pixel size is 1.3 centimeters. And I can easily do those measurements. Of course, as long as my image is aligned correctly. By using high resolution images, I do have a lot of possibilities and even for simple measurements. But if I just want to use those images for general collaboration, uh, maybe for sharing it because to ask a comment or, or specific note, then I quite possibly don't need that high resolution image. And of course we keep those because once again we do use different uh, images for different purposes. In some point uh, I do need to convert my images to lighter size. So as I said, my total amount of data is about uh, 250 gigabytes. If I do want to share all that data, then um, I probably be in trouble 
to select some specific um, web server. In some cases I do need to downscale my images so that I can still share all of those images with different parties. So in this case uh, I have done the conversion already and uh, if I select just one image I can see that it's less than one megabyte and altogether this the same folder or folder structure which includes 50 plus weeks of data is now just about 18 gigabytes. I do have 10 times lighter version of my drone mission data. I can more easily upload those images and start a sharing process. For example, I can use a free software package called XNView. In here I select tools and then patch convert and from this input tab I can first point to original data in where I do have those 250 gigabytes of image files. I select those, I can see about 34,000 and then I move to actions and in here I select my new resolution and actually this 2000 by 1300 is still quite good image resolution. If I don't want to calculate those numbers by myself I can easily select a preset. I can then select output and in here I do select the location into where I want to save my converted files. And it's really easy to use and also to keep the original structure, meaning that I still do have same file names, I can keep my folder structure, which means that I can apply same search mechanism as I did before. I just carry out with smaller images. I won't carry out this conversion right now, but I can see that I can also use multiple CPU cores and uh, of course, considering the amount of data, it may take time, but it's totally automatic. Maybe it takes one hour, maybe two hours. It also depends on your computer and also the amount of data. So I will exit this dialog right now. And if I do check now this converted folder, I can see that now the total size is 18 gigabytes. And of course, I can do similar search as before. And it is usually much quicker because files itself are smaller and it's easier to carry out this search. Also, if I select some images and include a tag, also this search is considerably quicker if I use smaller files. But I won't just wait once this search ends. I think that you, in general, you get the idea. The first uh, software I'm gonna show is called PVGo and it's a free software and basically anybody can install it but it's also much easier if your web service is already giving you an opportunity to install it basically automatically. So if it's available in your web service it is just a click of a button to install it and you can actually find some other common web services from here as well. Even if you don't have such possibility, then you can download it. It can be easily installed through FTP as well. So basically we now depend on how much data we can upload into our web server. But uh, this amount is uh, quite easily hundreds of uh, gigabytes, even terabytes. And that was a main reason why I actually downscaled my images. And once we have installed, I can show my PVGo frontend in where I do have different albums. Also, I do have one album in full resolution. And then I also have uploaded all those 20 gigabytes of um, image files. And in here, I can start a search or include tags very easily. But now, because I'm in a web service, I can also do it in a collaborative way. Of course, we can share our images through Dropbox, OneDrive, SharePoint, whatever. But usually those platforms doesn't have too many plugins available or possibilities. For general sharing, it's of course quite good, good enough. 
but uh, if you want to include some additional possibilities then you quite possibly need to look something else. So in my case I also have shared those images through SharePoint and if I take a look I can see all my images in here exactly the same folder structure I can search by name I can share with different users apply different user rights but still it is quite limited and maybe not so convenient to use if I want to build up some kind of uh, image based collaboration workflows. So I go back to my Pivigo. Of course I can upload those images from my PC or from my phone. Uh, we don't have to limit ourselves uh, that we only include uh, drone images. I can also include, uh, yes, my images from my phone and uh, I can post those into different uh, albums. So in here I do have a quest view. So if a uh, administrator has given all rights to access those albums by quest users then uh, those quests can uh, easily do it. They can select one particular image, uh, they can do a search, they can see additional information about this image, they can also download the image and in different uh, versions or in different um, sizes. So basically in our web server we do have a kind of converter included automatically which makes it really easy to download one specific image for your own needs. But let's now take a look to the administrator viewpoint. Of course uh, in here we do have a lot of um, more functionalities what we can do and this is probably a key reason why we can use this platform. We can more easily see how many albums and images we have, how many users we have uh, shared or connected into our system, but also we can create new albums and we can see those images what we have included. Of course we can now start the process uh, by including keywords. So let's add a couple of keywords like for example car, one more, maybe crane and let's add one more, maybe roof as well. If I do have my keywords ready then I can do some general search. Let's do it uh, in a similar way as we did it before. I can see all my images, I can create a new album based on this search and start collaboration by sharing it with other users. But I can also select one image and once I click edit I can then include those keywords or type a new one. For example, let's add a snow, I will also save. And now I can just search based on those keywords. Let's include snow and I can have a direct access to those images which include snow. Very easy to do. Because uh, it is a open platform, I can also install include different plugins which kind of enhance my Pivigo. And uh, I also have included uh, some plugins in here, for example, share album. Anyway, we can now turn our attention to commercial products. One example of this is using Lightroom, which is Adobe product. And quite many may use it uh, to organize their personal or family photos. So why not to use it or try to use it also for drone images? And uh, of course you can see similar functionality as we already shown. But uh, what makes Lightroom uh, different is that uh, you can use um, machine learning algorithms also in Lightroom to search some specific words. And then from all that uh, image library you can then see those images against one specific um, word or keyword. Of course it depends on the scale of the image and uh, how big, small some object on that image is, but in general it is quite a helpful function and for family and personal photos it works quite well. For example I can include a word of car, I hit enter and then I can see that uh, all those images do include somewhere one or more cars. As I can see, uh, one car is taking about one tenth of uh, image width 
or height so it's quite a small object but still if I want to search let's say people uh, yes I do have somewhere peoples and workers then those are way too small those cannot be found so if I let's say have a much kind of uh, larger view then of course uh, I may find those so this is one uh, good addition to previously shown um, software packages which is quite unique in Lightroom and uh, if I do have uh, different types of images I can use this artificial intelligence quite a lot and it helps also to organize my data if I go back and search car then uh, I can select a couple of those images and also include a keyword just as I did beforehand with different other packages if I now search this same keyword of course, I do get those images, but one good feature in Lightroom is also that uh, I can start easily the sharing process. So if I select, for example, those four images, by doing right click, I can select share to or share and in white, and then I can click on this get shareable link. And I do have uh, all possibilities to customize which kind of access I do want to share. For example, if I share this link, can anyone view or only certain people? I can also go to settings tab and include if uh, metadata is available and if show location is available. I can then copy this into my memory and just going to shared tab, I can see all my previous shares as well. If I now open up some other browser in where I'm not logged in and I'm pasting now this shared link, as it can be seen, all those four images are now shared. User can see some basic data, also location, if this was made available. I can click on that map, I can zoom in and this location really does represent my drone location from where or from which angle the image was taken. I can also comment but for that I do need to identify by myself meaning that I do need to have free account and sign in and then those comments are flowing into my Lightroom as well. Of course we didn't um, look into those ways how we can add images but um, I can ensure that uh, those are very similar to other products and uh, it's just about uh, creating one album folder structure and you can then include all your images by that i will end this video and uh, we have taken a look to different ways how we can share our images how we can convert images and how we can use different possibilities uh, from different software packages or services in where we can include um, more easy ways um, to find some specific uh, photos and also start commenting in terms of uh, sharing it. If you got excited to see my next episode, please do subscribe to my channel and you get notifications once I upload a new video. Bye bye.